I want to go back to something you said to me years ago when we first started working together. Uh, you described Benedictines as guardians of culture. Explain that urge that you say every Benedictine has uh, as it applies to your work today. We're a kind of interpretive community. So if you come and spend time with us in the monastery and you come to our prayers, we're praying through the Psalms, we're listening to readings from the Bible, readings from other Christian authors, and we're trying to put the pieces together from all of those sources to make sense of our own lives now. So it's looking at the past, but making the words of the past speak today in language that we can understand, uh, whether it be the sixth grade level English of the journalists <laughs> that you mentioned, or maybe a little more rooted in, in the Christian tradition. So what this means for us is that when we talk about this notion of preserving culture, or you use the phrase guardian of culture, it's not grabbing it and holding it like this so that it's untouched or protected from other people. The whole point of it is to make it live and breathe and to share it. So this little caricature that many of you probably have in your imagination of the Benedictine monk copying the manuscript hunched over the copy desk. What's interesting about that is it's not a static picture. It's making a copy. It's writing it out so that another generation can read it, so that it can be given to another community. And so this is how we think of our role in doing digital preservation of old manuscripts. It's not to lock them in a kind of data vault somewhere or hide them in the cloud. It's precisely to get them out there and make them accessible to their communities of origin and then to those around the world who are interested in learning more about these cultures. Thank you.